Hello, it is your friendly carnivorous plant lady, Daniela here. And I just wanted to do a video because I tend to get a lot of the same questions via email and DM and comments. Um, and I feel like a video might be an easier way to answer some of those questions when there's kind of a lot to say. And one of the biggest questions that I'm getting right now is, is my plant dormant or is it dead? So I thought I would just take a minute and show you what a dormant plant looks like. And I'll probably do another video to talk about dormancy itself, how to deal with your plants during dormancy, and the different ways you can provide dormancy depending on what zone you're in. So to start with, which plants go dormant? American pitcher plants, temperate sundews, and Venus flytraps all go dormant in winter, and it's really good for them to go dormant. But it is, you know, kind of terrifying because some of them look really, really dead. So let's start with the temperate drosera. So I have one for you right here. So you can see this is a thread leaf sundew and it looks just really really sad doesn't it but you can see right in the middle right there that is the hibernacula that's a little dormant bud in the very center of the plant and that is what is really important so i would say as long as your plant has that nice little hibernacula it's fine just you can gently clip all the leaves off as long as they're completely died back if you're really worried about the hibernacula, you can actually give it a really gentle squeeze. It'll feel firm and you'll know that your plant is doing really well. If it feels a little squishy, that's not the best sign, but I would still continue to treat it as usual and hope for the best. So the next one that I'm getting probably more emails than anything about would be Venus flytraps. So I've got a good example for you here. Okay, DCXL. Now this plant, makes really big traps and look at it now can you see all those dead traps here these are all traps that have died back and they are going to die back maybe even a little bit more over the course of the winter fly traps can actually still have um, some leaves and the leaves uh, the traps are just modified leaves so they might still have a few leaves over the course of the winter you might notice that they don't die back completely and that's normal um, sometimes they will just form a much smaller tighter lower to the ground rosette of traps so your really big tall ones like king henry that are like routinely like you know this big Will completely shrink down and be nothing but then in spring they're going to be really big again so if you're looking at your plant and it looks like this totally totally normal totally fine and honestly it might die back a hundred percent i have a lot of my littler fly traps at home they die back all the way and it's um a horrible feeling when you look at your fly trap bowls and your bogs and you're like oh my god they're all gone but they'll come back they'll be fine just make sure they don't dry out over winter then, of course, the next big group is the American pitcher plants. So, here's an interesting one I picked. This is got, this is a leucophylla. So you can see there's a lot of really nice pictures on it still, right? And that's the confusing part. But then there's also a lot of stuff that's looking like this. So the different species of American pitcher plants will actually go dormant at different points during the year, but they all will fully go dormant by around January. Leucophylla tends to have its pictures uh, in autumn and they kind of land it lasts for a while. So it's pretty typical to see those beautiful white pictures or any hybrids of Leucophylla often remain beautiful up until this point, but they will start to die back. I mean, look, you can see these brown pictures and you can hear it. See that? That's totally dry and crispy. That is dying back. Now, you can also see, I've got over here another example. So this plant, has a lot more dead and dried, crispy pictures. So I would recommend, as soon as they tie back all the way to the base of the plant, you can cut them off. However, if they're 50-50, like on this leucophylla, they're gonna start to go dormant, they're gonna start to die back, and they're gonna slowly die back along here. I would actually leave that attached to the plant until it dies back all the way to the very base of the plant. The reason being it can still be photosynthesizing, it still might have delicious yummy bugs in there, it's photo, it's uh, feeding to the rhizome in the soil, so I would just leave those on. Then in like January is when I would actually cut just everything, just clear cut it all, cut it all back really hard, and that will give the rhizome access to lots of sunlight, lots of fresh air, and it'll make room for all of the new pictures to grow. So that I hope helps give you idea, an idea of, you know, horrible, sad, dead, look, dead looking plant that is not in fact dead. That's typical, so don't freak out. 
I hope that helps. And you know, I'm probably gonna do a few more videos because it's way easier to give you guys information. Please just answer to the reply to this video and tell me things that you would like me to talk about. I think next time I will definitely do a video about dormancy, how to do fridge dormancy, how to do dormancy on the East Coast, how to do outdoor dormancy, because I think that that's the other thing I'm getting a lot of questions about, but I would love your ideas, stuff you want me to talk about, or if you would like me to do um, care tips for a specific group of plants, or if you just want like a tour of something, and um, I'll have Damon or I do some, some cool videos for you. All right, happy growing.